Where are we? We're in Valencia. Hello everybody and welcome to Valencia in beautiful southern Spain. So today we're going to take you on a little tour of the city. We're going to see some of the most well-known sites. We're going to admire the beautiful architecture and of course indulge in some of the local treats. So we can't wait to show you around. Let's get this day started. We've been spending a lot of time in Valencia. So we know the city pretty well. Today we're going to do lots of stuff in just one day. So if you're coming to the city for a short amount of time or even just 24 hours, this is the video for you. And if you're moving to Valencia, because there's loads of foreign expats who come here, because it's such an awesome place, keep watching, because we're going to show you what the city looks like and what it has to offer. So let's go. Let's go. favorite building in Valencia. It's the Ceramics Museum and it's so beautiful. And everywhere we travel, we always buy a magnet. So we got this one from Valencia. We already got one from Spain, but since we spent so much time in Valencia, we had to get a Valencian one too. So if you come to Valencia, you have to come to the market hall. That's where we're gonna start our journey today. This is the Mercado Central which is in the center, literally in the old town um, of the city. Apparently there used to be an open market back in the days and then in 1910 they had a competition to design the market hall and which was completed in 1923. So it has been here since then. It's beautiful. Let's go inside and see what it's like. Yeah. everything at this market. You can buy fish, you can buy cheese, you can buy meat, you can buy olives, you can buy fresh produce, you can buy drinks, you can actually have a meal I think. There's some like bars, um, everything. So let's see, we're gonna have some. So we just got out of the market right now and what we have here is a bocadilla de jamón. One of the things you definitely need to have when you go to Spain is jamón or just ham in English. What we have here is the ham sandwich. It's only got ham, cheese and nothing else on it. No butter, no mayonnaise, nothing. Let's give it a go. Mm. So this sandwich here was four euros. Personally, I prefer just getting the ham on on its own because it's really nice, really fatty, and the sandwich sometimes can be a little bit dry because it doesn't have anything on it, but 100% when you come to Spain, to Valencia, you have to try ham on.
like the narrowest house in all of Europe. It's only 107 centimeters wide. I can't even put my hands here. So we are at Orchateria Santa Catalina. We came here to drink some horchata. This is our, our video in Zaragoza. We already had this there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But basically, horchata is a drink made of tiger nuts. You might know it from Mexico, especially if you're American or Mexican. They have horchata there too, but it's made from rice. And here it's made out of tiger nuts, which is not tiger testicles. <laughs> it's a, actually a seed that grows underground and not basically and I think this is vegan because of that because it doesn't have milk it's actually like a nut milk so that's quite cool and then you have these fratetons which are these um, pastries um, one is filled with cream the other one's plain and you could also get chocolate here and you dip it in the horchata and then you bite it I think it has cinnamon it's very sweet. It has a unique flavor, but it's very delicious. It's very refreshing. When you hear in a talk, apparently it's also an aphrodisiac, or it like raises your libido. Is that how you say it? So I guess I'll report back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely have to come to one of those horchaterias and have some horchata. You can also get churros here with hot chocolate, but we are more, or at least me, I'm more horchata and paton kind of. Girl. So good. We're going inside the Valencia Cathedral we're to see the Holy Grail. We're going to steal it. <laughs> so we're inside the Valencia Cathedral. And apparently the Holy Grail is here, the cup that Jesus used when he had his last meal. And apparently there's like 200 places or more even that claim they have the Holy Grail. So who knows if this one is real, but apparently it's recognized by the Vatican as holy and Valencia as a city in general. I haven't seen it yet. Apparently it's very small. It costs eight euros to get in here, which I think is a bit steep for a church, but it's a quite beautiful church, I have to say. There's a lot of pretty cool art and golden decoration. It's nice. One thing you have to drink when you come to Valencia is this, Agua de Valencia. This is basically the cocktail of the city. And what it has is freshly squeezed Valencian oranges, which are super sweet and delicious. It's also got vodka, gin, and Spanish cava, which is kind of like a sparkling wine. It's really sweet, but also very strong. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. It's literally perfect. I don't think there's a better drink. We're actually at Café de las Horas, which is a really old, beautiful, decorated place with chandeliers, very oranges, baroque. everywhere, very Baroque, yeah. 
red curtains and everything. This is quite touristy and a lot of people come here. Here the Agua de Valencia costs 12 euros for half a liter. It's very sweet here and it is strong, but we've been to some other bars where it's a bit cheaper and stronger. So I feel like you should come here for the atmosphere, for the, the vibe, vibe, but you should try Agua de Valencia somewhere else too and you might get a better deal and maybe a bit more booze, but this already has a lot of booze. It's very dangerous, so don't drink too much of it. Café de la Puerta for some lunch. When you think about Spain, you probably think about paella. And a lot of people might think that Spanish people eat paella for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, but that's actually not the case. Paella actually comes from Valencia. Here, it's the birthplace, but the paella you know is not actually the original, original paella that exists from Valencia. Normally, it has rabbit, chicken, snails, and um, green beans, right? And it's technically, when you look at the pan, it looks a bit more brown than maybe the red, orange color that you know. And of course, you can get seafood paella with prawns, but the real original thing, the one from Valencia, doesn't actually have seafood. We spend a lot of time in Valencia, as I said, so we've already had that paella a couple of times. It's delicious. You definitely have to try it. But today, though, we're going to have a similar dish. It's called fideua, I think. I'm probably saying this wrong because I think the word is not Spanish, it's Valenciano. But it's like a paella, you're going to see, similar, but instead of rice, it has pasta. So stay oh, tuned. Dudes. We'll also have some wine because you have to have wine with Spanish food. Cheers. So as Ani mentioned, one of the most important parts of a meal when you have Spanish food is the wine. Actually, you can get bottles of wine at a lot of restaurants for anywhere between 7 to 10 euros. Unfortunately, which leads me to my next point, if you don't make a reservation, sometimes you do what we did and you end up at a place that's a little bit more expensive. And like the cheapest bottle here was 19 euros. So on weekends especially, pretty much any time for lunch and dinner, you should make a reservation at least two or three days in advance if you want to make sure that you go to the restaurant that you, you want. But it doesn't really matter because we've never once had a buy paella in Valencia, so we're excited either way. This is gonna be really delicious. Can't wait. Padea has finally arrived. I think it took about 40 minutes. Something you should expect when you come to a paella restaurant. We're super excited to try this because it looks amazing. It's got langoustines, some mussels, and it looks like some, maybe some calamari or something like that as well. It's got that dark orange color, which comes from the saffron. So I'm really looking forward to this. It's super delicious. There's a little bit of a seafood taste. You can taste the saffron. We've got all this fresh seafood, so let me try mussel. I'm a massive fan of mussels. Mm. Oh yeah. So juicy, so fresh. It's got that nice salty, briny seafood flavor. I'm really excited to try the langoustines as well, but I think we'll have Anya try that and show you how it's done. So now I'm gonna try it. Super delicious. Uh, the pasta is a bit less al dente like the rice normally is. Normally the rice is a bit like hard. This is a lot softer, but it tastes really good. It's really seafoody, and maybe I prefer seafoody paellas. I don't know. Try to decide. We got these massive langoustine shrimp. Probably gonna do this wrong. I don't remember how to do this. Just rip off its head, decapitate it. How, like here? Oh yeah. Oh no, it's squirted. <laughs> I'm supposed to suck that. But yeah, the secret <laughs> with these is 
Well, you eat the meat, which is, I'm sure, delicious. I mean, oh no. Let me get some meat. Oh no. The meat's delicious. I'm gonna eat that after. But you're supposed to suck the head. So all the good stuff is in the head. Yeah. You have to suck his brains out. We learned that from years of living in Asia. You always suck the juice. <laughs> I think I literally made it explode everywhere. There's not so much left in there. She sucked it and made it explode everywhere. No, I mean, <laughs> when I took it apart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's delicious. I love seafood. I never used to like shrimp. And then I went to Thailand and I ate massive ones. <laughs> and I liked it a lot better because Back in the days in the UK, I would just get these like tiny shrimps with mayonnaise. My friend used to eat those in a sandwich and it's kind of weird. But these massive ones, delicious. I think linguines are actually a mini lobster. I'm not so good about them. Well, maybe that's why they're better, but... They're delicious. Everything's really good. I can't yeah. wait to devour this. Yeah, I'm so hungry. I just want to eat it all. So the food was delicious. We actually got our beers for free because the waiter thought that we waited for quite a long time, although we thought it was quite normal, <laughs> especially when you order paella. Um, so that was nice. Yeah. And final verdict, I think I personally prefer paella over the fideuwa, um, so the rice over the pasta, but I do prefer the seafood version. However, what I think is really nice about the Valenciano paella that you should definitely try here is that if you don't like seafood, which I think a lot of people don't really like that much or maybe are not familiar with, you can have paella without the seafood. And it's actually the original. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think if you're going to choose just one and you're here for a day or two, you should definitely go with the original yeah. the paella Valenciana. I don't think you can really beat that one. And I do think the, uh, the rice is much better because it's as she said before, El Dante, it's a little bit... It's harder. A little bit yeah. harder. The, the noodles were a bit soft, so I prefer that version. If you can have just one, go with that one. Exactly. But now we're going to walk a little bit more and show you a little bit more. We are at the Bull Ring. Or the Plaza de Toro de Valencia? Not quite sure. But they still have bullfights here, but we don't recommend going to see a bullfight. It's quite an impressive architecture, a piece of architecture. It's inspired by the Roman Colosseum and Roman architecture, I think, in general. And I think they have concerts here as well and other things. So it's quite nice to look at. And if you come in by train for the first time, when you come to Valencia, you're gonna see that. Pretty much, it's gonna be the first thing you're gonna see. So we're walking through Zafa, which is one of the maybe hippest parts of Valencia, especially when it comes to expats. There's a lot of expats living here. There's a lot of bars. There's a lot of vintage shops and things like that. So if you want to check out some cool bars and places you should come to the Zafa while you get some pretty cool restaurants too foreign restaurants as well if you want any like foreign cool I don't Ramen, know, Japanese Korean yeah food. food like that you'll find it in the Zafa Currently in Turia Park, which is actually Spain's largest urban park. It stretches through, I think, nine kilometers through Valencia, so it's really massive. It actually was formerly a riverbed that they, I guess, drained and dug out, and now it's this massive green, lush park. What? Dry? I don't know. They emptied it. They did whatever they did with it, but they <laughs> turned it into a massive, beautiful park. Everybody comes here to work out. They take their kids here to play. There's also little uh, canteens scattered throughout, so you can have a little beer in the sun if you want. Yeah, it's really beautiful, really green. Perfect little oasis away from the city and the, the craziness. So 
So we are at the City of Arts and Science now, which is this futuristic avant-garde architecture type of building. It was designed by the architect Santiago Calatrava and Felix Candela. And lots of TV shows and movies have been filmed here. Doctor Who, you said Tomorrowland, Westworld. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, it looks crazy. Like I don't, I've never seen anything like this in my life in any other city. I think it's one of the 12 treasures of Spain, whatever that means. <laughs> and they have a building with concerts, like classical concerts, like symphony type of style. And you can go on like a paddle boat, there's the aquarium, there's a science museum. And once we went to see something there. Yeah, when Fayez goes on, which Fayez is it's the biggest festival in Valencia, these massive statues are built specifically just for this event that are then burned down at the end of it. There's fireworks pretty much every day, almost for a month. And yeah, over in the, this building back here, they hold a little exhibition and you can vote for your favorite miniature Fias. And we went there last year and it was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool what they built for that festival, but it's also kind of crazy when you live here or spend yeah. some time here during that it's intense. time. Because it's just explosions, explosions, explosions. Throughout the day and night, even if it's the middle of the day, people blasting fireworks. It's uh, quite the sight. <laughs> But you can also have some drinks here and just hang out around the water and it's quite a cool place to hang out and then we have, you still have Toria Park right here so mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. There's also a nightclub in this kind of in, oh, in yeah. this contraption. <laughs> um, so you have everything you definitely have to come and see the City of Arts and Science when you're here. With the beach being so close to the City of Arts and Sciences, I think that a lot of people would have the perfect night if they ended it at the beach. However, if you're anything like us, you can just be a cheap ass and buy one euro wine. So this is the end of the video. If you like this video, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and do all the things. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.